the first question we are looking at, this is question number nine. It appeared on the CS2 exam, CS2A exam, uh, April 2019. <clears throat> now I've indicated that here, okay? So uh, let's read the question. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to go through all the lines of my solution, but I want to talk about the gen general ideas, right? Uh, the questions, uh, all the questions that I have um, uh, chosen are, are available on the IFOA website and uh, examiner's reports are also available, right? So you can look them up. So <clears throat> let's look at number nine, uh, read the question and see what they need. So they gave me a time series model, yt.5 plus 0.9, yt minus 1 minus 0.14, yt minus 2 plus et. And you know what ET is, yeah? The white noise process. Uh, they gave me a uh, variance of sigma squared. Uh, determine whether YT is a stationary process. That's the first part. It's a three-pointer. And the mod identify the model as an ARIMA PDQ. Okay, so which means this should be pretty easy. Um, but they just want the values of P, D, and Q. Basically, you just need to identify, right? Identify. Then you're supposed to calculate the expected value of YT. And then part four, calculate the variance of the process and the autocorrelation values, row one and row two. Okay, so let's get started, right? So uh, you can follow my solution. Okay, uh, keep an eye on the question though, so that you know exactly what's going on. Um, okay. So what I have done, okay, Good. Okay. So you see uh, from the equation that they gave me, okay, the time series process that they gave me, I have brought uh, the terms to the left-hand side, right? And I've left uh, 0 0.5 and E sub T on the right-hand side. So you can see I, I get YT minus uh, point, excuse me, uh, let me write the original time process here. It's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.9 yt minus 1 uh, minus 0 0.14 yt minus 2 plus et. So I brought this term to the left-hand side. So you get it here, minus 0.9 yt minus 1. And I brought this to the left-hand side. And I have plus 0 0.14 yt minus 2. So on the right-hand side, I only have this. You can see why I'm doing this, right? Uh, I'm trying to set up the characteristic equation, right? So you set up the characteristic equation. So I have one minus 0 0.9 lambda plus 0 0.14 lambda squared. How we get this? If you have forgotten, please look up your notes, right? So one minus 0 0.9 lambda uh, plus 0 0.14 lambda squared. This is a quadratic equation, okay? You can solve a quadratic equation using your formula, okay? Again, right, I'm writing the, the main idea is I'm writing the characteristic equation for the AR terms. Maybe I should write it down here. Okay, I'm writing the characteristic equation for the AR terms. I get a quadratic. I solve it using the quadratic formula. I'll get these two values of lambda. Yeah, Both these roots are bigger than one in magnitude. Therefore, the process is stationary. Pretty straightforward. An easy three-pointer. Okay, and um, we have a process that is stationary, okay? The process is stationary, so we don't have to do any other work. We can write this straight away, okay? Let me clear this, yeah? Okay, the process is stationary, so we don't have to do any more work like difference again, all that. So your D is zero straight away, okay? Now, uh, we are looking for your AR terms. When you look at your AR terms, your maximum lag is two, okay? Okay, if you look at your AR terms, okay? Your maximum lag is two, therefore your P is two, okay? Your P is two. Uh, and your Q is zero, why? I've written the reason here, okay? Uh, no pass, uh, okay? Uh, white noise terms, right? No pass white noise terms, right? That means the uh, M, the moving average component, right? Okay, so I repeat, it's zero here because there are no past white noise terms. In other words, no MA component. Okay, good. So it is ARIMA 
0.200. Okay. That's what they wanted. Identify the model, Arima PDQ. So you write down Arima 200. You get one mark for this. That's about it. So you can do it really quickly. Then for the next part, uh, you asked to find the expected value of yt. That one is not so bad. Just take the expectations, right? On both sides. Yeah? Okay. You take expectations on both sides. So let me write it here, right? yt equals to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.9 yt minus 1, uh, minus 0 0.14, yt minus 2 plus et, right? So you take the expected value here. And you take the expected value here, right? So the expected value of this is gone. It's zero, right? So all you have to do is just expected value of a constant like 0.5. It's a, it's a constant. Then I point 0.9 times the expected value of yt minus 1. Then, okay, this one here, right? Plus 0.9, okay? Plus 0.9 times, let me say that again. Plus 0.9 times the expected value of yt minus 1. And then I have a minus 0.14. The expected value of y, t minus 2. This is a process which is stationary, right? This is a process that's stationary, so we have a constant mean, right? We have a constant mean. I've already said this. So we can write, let's say the constant mean is mu. So which means we can write from here, right? Okay, let's move the screen up. Okay. So you can see I've written it here for you. Okay. Just this is a stationary process, right? This is mu here. This is mu here. And this is mu here. There you go. Mu equals to 0 0.5 plus 0.9 mu minus 0.14 mu. You solve this equation, you'll get this answer. Okay. Great. So uh, we want to deal with uh, the variance and so on. So the last part of the question, help with the variance yt of the process and the autocorrelation values. So I have done some uh, working here. Okay. Uh, okay. What you can do is uh, on your own, I, I've made a comment here using covariance, right? Okay. Using covariance of yt minus uh, K E T equal to zero using this. Okay. We can get the covariance of Y T E T, right? We can get the covariance of Y T comma E T as equal to Sigma squared. Uh, what you can do is you can write this, right? Uh, you write all your terms. Okay. If you write down all your terms of Y T, right? That means you write 0.5 plus 0.9 yt minus 1 minus 0.14 yt minus 2 plus et. When you write all those things and you pair the terms up, remember, when we deal with covariance, we take them okay in twos, right? So when you do that, okay, you'll end up with the covariance of et and et. So you'll get sigma squared. Okay. Also, uh, note, right, this fact here, let me write it down here. Your future error, yeah? Your future error, okay, not correlated, okay, with past yt, okay. Your future error is not correlated with, that's the idea, right? Your future error is not correlated with past yt. So you can write your uh, covariance yt minus k ets zero. And this one, I told you how to get it will be sigma squared, okay? So now, I follow all these things along, right? Because uh, this idea is repeated throughout many of the questions. So uh, make sure you know that, right? Okay. Okay, then what happens is, oops, okay, now we can get rid of that. So if you can't follow something, if you don't get something, just pause the video and make sure you uh, understand the ideas, right? Okay, so I'm going for gamma 1. Yeah, what is gamma 1? Yep, covariance with the lag, 1. Good. So it's covariance yt, yt minus 1. Correct? Okay, so uh, yt, remember it's 0.5 plus 0.9 yt minus 1. There, it's all here. 
okay, minus 0.14 yt minus 2 plus et, right? You write down the process for the left-hand term here, okay, yt. Okay, you write down the whole process here. And this thing here, yt minus 1, leave it alone. So we only write down the process for the term on the left. Now, after that, okay, after that, okay, we will deal with the covariance. Okay, we will take term by term. This 0.5, right, it's quite trouble-free, right? It's a constant. So even if you, let me just draw one arrow here. If you take this 0.5 and you go this way, the covariance, I mean, you know, the it, it's zero, right? So then take this one, okay? Take this one and this one. So now I have 0 0.9 here. This is yt minus one. This is yt minus one. So I should get 0 0.9 gamma naught, okay? Good, because yt minus one and yt minus one, your lag is zero. Then you go to this one, okay? Okay, so I have 0 0.14 yt minus two. And then I have yt minus 1. I have a lag of 1. So I have gamma 1 here with a minus 0.14. So just uh, pair the terms up slowly. And then I told you just now, right? This is et and this is ET, yt minus 1. Come back here. Okay. You can ignore it. Yeah, because value is 0. So now I have gamma 1 equals to 0.9 gamma naught minus 0.14 gamma 1. Okay. Good. So... Um, uh, you can you can clean this up. Uh, you can get you know clean up the algebra a little bit, and you will get this thing here. Okay, good. Then we go to gamma two, yeah, lag two. So y t and y t minus two. So again, replace the left hand term here, the term on the left, with this whole process, and then do the same thing like we did just now. We start take two at a time, right? 0.5 and this one's gone. So then we look at this one and this one, okay? 0.9 yt minus one and yt minus two. So <clears throat> we'll get a lag of one, yeah? t minus one minus t minus two, you'll get one, okay? So that's what you see here, gamma one and 0 0.9. Then you go to the next one, this one and this one. Uh, so I'll get minus 0.14 is t minus 2 and t minus 2 so my leg is 0 I have this so it's pretty good right it's not hard to do just go slow and you'll be fine right okay now let's move on right let's move on so folks we have this is a very common thing that you're going to do on an exam okay so that's why I'm taking a bit of time with the first example, and I think it's fantastic. So remember, we already have uh, gamma 1 is 15 over 19 gamma naught. And then now, okay, now we have, okay, uh, we're just cleaning this up. Uh, cleaning this up. You can do this on your own, right? Uh, we stop at gamma 2 is 0 0.9, gamma 1 minus 0 0.14, gamma naught, the last line on the previous page. So what do you do? Just continue on, right? Because gamma 1, you know, is this. Okay? Just plug it in and you will get now gamma 2 is this. Okay? So your gamma 2 is this. So, uh, as you can tell, these things, you can handle it quite easily. Uh, just be a bit patient. Don't rush through this. We don't want to make any silly mistakes. Okay? So we are done with this. This is easy because, you know, we know the definition of rho k, right? We learned this before. Rho k is what? Uh, this is your autocorrelation function, right? Autocorrelation function, ACF at lag k. So we have rho k will be gamma k over gamma naught, right? Gamma k over gamma naught. So they asked me to find this question, rho 1. Okay, let me settle that first. Rho 1 is gamma 1 over gamma naught from here. So you know the answer already. Done. Uh, rho 2, also not bad, is gamma 2 over gamma naught. But we already have this, right? So it is... This answer here. That's it. Okay? But we haven't settled one thing though, right? We have to find the... Um, we asked to find the variance of yt. Let me settle that. Okay? Very quickly. Okay? Uh, gamma naught, right? Gamma naught is what? Gamma naught is this one here. Covariance of yt with yt. So, uh, write the expression down. Okay? 
and then we have yt here. Now you know how to do it. Forget about the 0.5, right? In some of the examples that I worked, I don't even write the constant term yeah, because it doesn't affect us, right? So you take 0.9, yt minus 1, you go here, okay? Let me just draw some arrows, right? Give me a minute, okay? Okay, this term and this term, you will get this one here, 0.9 gamma 1, okay? Then you take this term and this term, okay? You'll get minus 0.14, can you see? This t minus 2, this is t. So you take t minus t minus 2, you'll get 2. There you go, gamma 2. And then, okay, not hard, right? Uh, once you've taken, taken any of that, you take this and this. Remember I told you just now, when you write this thing, when you open this up, you will get an ET here. So an ET with the ET, you will get sigma squared, right? Covariance ET with ET, you will get sigma squared. So that's basically it, right? That's how they get it, right? And so you'll get this line. So just do it slowly. It's not hard because gamma naught is the variance of uh, YT, right? As you can tell, right? The covariance of a random variable with itself is the variance. So all you have to do is go in and substitute stuff in it, things that you already have, okay? Gamma 1 you have, gamma 2 you have, sigma squared you have. Clean up the algebra, okay? Clean up the algebra and you'll get your final answer, okay? I think enough said about that. Uh, I've done the whole thing. Uh, mine may be, if you like, you can cut short some of your working, right? Uh, but uh, I've written it uh, to be a bit instructive so that you can follow the lines uh, when you go through them, okay? So if I answer, you get gamma naught is something, no big deal, okay?